O Lord, open our lips. And our our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. Do you be praise and glory for ever. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the world, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. God in Christ has revealed his glory. O come, let us worship. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory Glory to the the Father, Father, and and to the Son, and and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome to you at home to this service of daily prayer for the second Sunday of Epiphany. We are recording this from the Church of St John the Baptist, Boylston. Thank you to Steve, who joins us today, and to my husband David, for all the technical stuff involved in recording and producing this service. With the escalating rate of COVID-19 infection, we're ceasing to deliver public worship in the churches of the Longford Eight Benefice for the immediate future. But some of our churches, like this one, will continue to open at specific times for private prayer. The theme of our psalm and readings today is about vocation and being called. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are going to hear the choir of St Martin in the field sing, I come with joy, a child of God.
the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 139, verses 1 to 9. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord and Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. If he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went to lay down his, his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at the 43rd verse. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses, in the law and also the prophets, wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. This is the Christ, the The chosen chosen of God, the the one who will bring bring healing to the the nations. nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. This is the Christ, the Chosen of God, the One who will bring healing to the nations. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Picture, if you will, two of us sitting on garden chairs with rugs over us to look as if we were in bed, being Eli and Samuel in front of a room full of primary school children. This was the first Bible story we presented to Master Montgomery Primary School as the Open the Book team. Open the Book is a way of bringing Bible stories alive for primary school children. It's an idea begun by a group in Bedfordshire in the 1990s who were shocked that so many children were growing up unaware of stories from the Bible. Open the Book teams now operate across the country and beyond. We chose the story of Eli and Samuel for its simplicity and clear message of being called. Fifteen years later, until Covid, 
we were still telling these stories from the Bible. Come and see. Today's readings are about vocation or calling. Many of us find the idea of vocation a scary one, but all of us, sooner or later, are called to use our talents, experience, opportunities, or enthusiasms in the service of others. How we respond is up to us. None of us can doubt the vocations of NHS staff currently on the front line dealing with COVID. And miraculously, more people are wanting to become nurses because they can see the value of such a calling. The boy Samuel was called by God in a dream. So vividly does Samuel feel God's prompting that he thinks the elderly priest Eli is summoning him. Samuel responds to his vocation and grows up to become a prophet himself. Samuel was found directly by God. Others are called through human agency. Jesus found Philip and Philip found Nathanael. And Philip says to Nathanael, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus is identified in terms of Jewish expectations. Philip sees Jesus as the one predicted in the scriptures, both by Moses and the prophets. Philip, having been found by Jesus, goes on to find Nathanael, showing how discipleship works. Nathanael's puzzling jibe, can anything good come out of Nazareth, perhaps reflects the fact that Nazareth does not feature in any scriptural prophecies. Nathanael is immediately identified by Jesus as an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. This reference compares Nathanael with Jacob. It was Jacob who was first given the name Israel after wrestling with God. Jacob, whose name means deceiver or supplanter, deceived his father Isaac into giving him the blessing destined for his elder twin brother Esau. Further reference to Jacob comes in the very last verse when Jesus predicts, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is a picture of Jacob's dream in the book of Genesis where he saw angels of God ascending and descending on a ladder connecting heaven and earth. In the mission of Jesus, culminating in his life and exaltation, Nathaniel and all the readers of John's Gospel will see greater things than Jacob saw. We will see Jesus, the Son of Man, as the bridge between heaven and earth serving as the very gate to heaven. Philip's response to being found by Jesus was to find Nathanael and bring him too to Jesus. Philip made the proper response of any Christian to being found by God in saying, come and see. Becoming a disciple of Jesus depends on being found, responding to the invitation to come and see, and learning about the way of life Jesus teaches to his followers. Last week I saw some statistics that were both frightening and inspiring. Nothing to do with Covid, you'll be pleased to hear. The charity Open Doors has assembled a league table of the 50 countries where it is most difficult to be a Christian. Unsurprisingly, North Korea topped the list. But Nigeria, number nine on the list, is where more Christians are murdered for their faith than in any other country. Although almost half of Nigerians are Christian, most of these are in the south of the country. In the north, Christians face constant attacks from Boko Haram, Fulani militants and other extremist Islamic groups. Across the world, those 
who suffer most are those who convert to Christianity from another faith. And yet, people are risking their lives and livelihoods to be faithful Christians. Here's an example from Somalia. Momina, not her real name, met Jesus in a dream, a way God uses to break through to people who have no chance of hearing about him any other way. She managed to find a Christian man who gave her a Bible, and she gave her life to Christ. But she faced extreme opposition from her Muslim family. Even her husband abandoned her. But through her faith in God, Momina encountered an open doors partner that runs a church, taking care of believers from a Muslim background. In this country, we're more likely to faith, face apathy than persecution. So how good are we at recognising our own calling, being found by Jesus, and then finding others to whom we can say, come and see? The Epiphany marks the revelation of Christ to the Gentiles, to the rest of the world, a time to say of our Christian faith, come and see. Amen. Continuing this theme, we're going to hear St. Martin's voices sing, Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? We pray for the coming of God's kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your spirit, 
bring Bring in in your your kingdom. kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Help us to fight the coronavirus as one, feeding each other and giving hope to those who need us. Father, by your Spirit, bring bring in in your your kingdom. kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. By your calling and your Spirit, let us be your hands, your feet, your body and your voice. Father, by your Spirit, bring bring in in your your kingdom. kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. We offer to you those in our communities who are sick. We pray for their recovery. Father, by your Spirit, bring bring in in your your kingdom. kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your Spirit, Bring Bring in in your your kingdom. kingdom. Father, use us, unworthy as we are, to bring in your kingdom of mercy, justice, love and peace. Empower us by your Spirit and unite us in your Son, that all our joy and delight may be to serve you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the unity of all peoples on earth in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your your will will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, Gladden our hearts with the good news of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God.